Evening, YouTube. You guys are not watching another segment of the Cali Effect. It is that time of the year where new strategies must be introduced to a new format that is known as the July 2015 format by Konomi. Or really, actually, what we've checked about about a last ban list is that cards really didn't get hit that much. But there are still five underrated strategies that you should at least be trying out for this format before you even decide on picking a deck. I know I will. Number five on this list is Shadows. And I know a lot of people are like, Cali Effect, Shadows, why? They're the best deck, they just won a Nationals. People must understand that Shadows are a forever dying deck, extremely reliant on the opponent using the extra deck to be able to completely abuse its resources. With pendulums becoming more and more prominent, Shadows will eventually die out and become that deck of the past. But here is the perfect time to capitalize on Shadows. Everybody tends to play weird, awkward decks that rely on special summoning from the extra deck or really bad tier 2 decks, something that Shadows completely capitalize on. Now keep in mind, Wenda, Construct, and Shekinaga are still very powerful cards that were left unchecked by the ban list that Shadows can still abuse. If these cards do get left unchecked, they completely ruin the opponent's strategy. This deck is still grand, not to mention that it has still very good fusion and powerful synchro plays, and with the release of Trishua, this deck just got so much better. Now, who hasn't wanted to Trish somebody in Shadows? I know I have. But wait, there's even more. Shadows can play the grind game. Being able to special summon Shadow Beast face down through Shadow Falco, or even being able to add your Shadow Fusions back from your graveyard to your hand, this deck is almost like the ultimate recursible deck. That and no monster you play in Shadows could ever be dead. I mean, unless you're playing wind monsters, Shadows can abuse just about every mo every type of monster that you play inside of them to their ability. With light monsters, you can make construct. With earth monsters, you make Shekinaga. And with the ever so powerful dark monsters, you make Winda. This deck is definitely viable to make a splash at the beginning of the format and can possibly be even better depending on how dependent the next set is on the extra deck. Number four on this list is Elemental Heroes. Now, Elemental Heroes are a deck that have been flip-flopping in the meta, pretty dependent on the opponent, but then at the same time still can ruin the game even if the opponent isn't so dependent on what heroes do. Heroes have the best anti-meta monster in the game right now known as elemental hero or mass hero dark law and what dark law does it becomes a walking macrocosmos that banishes cards from the opponent hands when they search now who would want a card who can even dream of a card better than dark law and guess what heroes can make it very easily it's not that hard for the deck to make it this deck has heavy hitting plays and can end the game very quickly if left unchecked. Their match change combos and their XC combos making Excalibur swinging for at least 4k damage at any given time is really good. The fact that they can completely abuse Shadow Mist and all of their Elemental Heroes to the full extent, and we all know Elemental Hero monsters are pretty good, gives this deck a unique edge over opponents. And just the fact that it has so much searchability, you can run a very low count of monsters giving you the opportunity to run so much anti-meta like cards that can overwhelm the opponent themselves. This deck is a prime contender because it makes so many great plays and most of its push plays get you advantage in the end. I definitely would consider Elemental Heroes just because of its sheer advantage and just the fact that it can finish off opponent really quickly if left unchecked. Number three on this list could arguably be number one on this list because of its sheer relevancy throughout every single format just about. This deck is just testing waters to see if it can be viable yet again to take the top tables of this format. Pretty sure that pun already gave it away because the deck that I'm talking about is Mermel. Now Mermels have a plethora of options and a plethora of combos that you can run with them to break down the opponent, dwindle their resources, and attack for game. This deck is so good at controlling the board, but it can also put an OTK factor if left unchecked. This deck is probably one of the most power creeped out decks just because if you look at it paper wise, it is the most amazing deck in the format. And only time will tell is if it did regain its synergy from Dragoons being put back in two. 
there's a, actually a lot of interesting things we can talk about with Dragoons being put back to two. It allows the Mermel player to play more copies of Mermel Abyss Megalo without any repercussions. Now since they have an extra discard target, rank 7, rank 4, and rank 3 plays become a lot easier to make. Also, let's not forget about the synchro plays that this deck can make. Anywhere between 4 and 10 is very viable with this deck. Being able to summon both a, a variety of rank 4s, 7s, and 3s, as well as synchro plays to the field, could be a key component to Mermails dominating the board. But wait, there's more. This deck does not need to make any extra deck plays to be viable. It has sheer power by abusing the effects of marksmen and infantry, followed by megalo and gun, to just put a tons amount of a pressure on the board. This deck is also one of the most searchable decks of all time, right behind Necros if you ask me in my opinion, through Undyne, Megalo, Dragoons, Pike, and Tias. That's five cards and only one of them is semi-limited. This deck can be a serious contender, but only time will tell if this deck can be a serious contender, as this deck is probably one of the best of all time. Number two on this list is Yang Zing. No, seriously, Yang Zing Master Race is the best deck of all time. I'm sorry, Dragon Rulers, move over. This deck has everything needed to completely take over this meta. This deck has sheer power, ability. Uh, it, it's the best deck to go on the time. This deck just kills it. But Galley Effect, why isn't it number one then? Shut up, you always gotta ruin somebody's shot. Yang Zings are that deck to beat. They make some of the most impossible synchro monsters to get over. You know, not being able to be affected by spells, traps, can't be destroyed by a battle, gains an extra 500 attack. All those are critical to making some of the best monsters on the board and some of the most unstoppable monsters on the board. This deck can easily get around cards or decks that try to OTK through just monsters as every single Yang Zing recycles one another. So it gets pretty hard to overcome one monster when multiple monsters are being played. The deck has little to no searchability so cards like Mistake and Anti-Meta like cards can be played. You don't have to worry about effect negation so cards like Skill Drain can be played. This deck has anti-meta aspects, it can drop very powerful monsters, has the a range of synchros, can make every single one in the book, and also is a very powerful deck. This deck is probably the best deck to play with going into time as every single monster, like I stated before, floats itself. It has a very good draw engine inside of a Pot of Avarice Reborn card like Yang Zing Path, and more often than not, when you set, set up with Yang Zing Creation, you'll more than likely dominate the game. Number one on this list has seen so many trials and tribulations, but with the next set coming up and so many cards hit that would stop it, this deck is primed to make an impact. Infernoids. Now, Infernoids are really good for one thing, dropping huge monsters at little to no cost. This deck is almost impossible to stop once set up. The hugest monsters that they do have have Rideki and Heavy Storm-like effects, but that's not where Infernoids get their best quantities from. Their effect negation, their back row negation, and also the ability to disrupt the opponent's graveyard and not utilize the extra deck is what puts Infernoids over the top. This deck can have a very successful season if played right with the right person's hands. There is no stopping how this deck goes when it goes right. And once everything falls into the favor of Infernoids, you can pretty much hand them the game. Now, Infernoids do have some somewhat of a luck factor, seeing that they do need to mill an excessive amount of monsters, and they can be walled out with cards like Imperial Iron Wall. But an innovative player will make adjustments to those for Infernoids to be that prime deck. That's right, Infernoids or that deck to beat are that deck to beat, and I suggest you guys, I don't know, try them out. They're pretty cheap. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I want to know your top five decks that you feel can be an impact, game changer, or just really good decks that people should try out. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.